The cops play Royals a strike again. This time, Harry and Meghan are apparently going to Nigeria on some sort of tour. Now, I can't really say anything about the, what the Nigerians want or anything like that. But what is reflected in some outlets reporting this as an official royal visit as Vanity Fair did, it is confusing the role of royalty because Harry and Meghan are not working royals. They represent nothing, nothing but their own business interests at this point. They are cosplay royals. They keep trying to be royal when they're no longer royal. They gave up that job. But there's a lot of confusing messaging, I think, between the palace that Harry and Meghan are constantly taking advantage of. And this situation with Nigeria is just another example of that. Because yes, maybe the government of Nigeria or the military aspect of Nigeria really does want Harry and Meghan there to promote the Invictus Games. But the problem with anything connected to the Invictus Games, especially when Meghan Markle goes along, is that all of a sudden it becomes the Meghan show, and by extension, sometimes the Harry show. Over the last couple of years, they have completely lost sight of what the Invictus Games are all about. And it has become just this sideshow attraction for Harry and Meghan to promote themselves. And this trip to Nigeria is no different. But again, there are a lot of big, broad, royal implications for this. And what Harry and Meghan continue to try to do, that the palace just seems to let them do without any repercussions. And as Charles is getting back to work and seems to be healthier, although he has continued to undergo cancer treatments, this is an opportunity for him to start addressing the situation because Charles, this has gone on long enough. They're just going to continue to do this. It ain't going to get any better. The only thing the palace can do is figure out how to deal with the madness rather than trying to simply ignore it. So that is what we are going to discuss today. But if you guys haven't been to Royal News Network, my name is Brittany. I provide y'all compelling royal commentary about the latest news, sometimes the drama going on behind the scenes. So guys, feel free to hit that subscribe button. We are so close now, like a couple thousand away because we're at 148,000, almost 149 to getting to 150. So let's see if the, at the end of this week, we can get to 150,000. That would be Awesome. So guys, I'd love to have you come on this channel. We are also doing a bit of a charity drive for Catherine with Anna Lucia Diamond. So I am wearing my diamond hoops here and my diamond studs. I got my tennis bracelet on. And so I love Anna Lucia and she is doing a special promotion here. Her and I are where we are selling in particular the Royal Lucky Star Ring. So if you are interested in purchasing that particular ring, it is stars. It has lab created diamonds in it. It is gorgeous. I'm getting my own piece here sometime very soon this week, and I will show it to you guys when I get it. But if you again purchase one of those, you still save 20% with my code ROYAL20, and then also 5% of the proceeds from myself and Anna Lucia Diamonds will go to help support American Cancer Society. And I also have an upcoming trip with members to the Christmas markets in Germany and the Czech Republic. So if you guys are interested in that, there will also be a link down below as well. So when the announcement came, I think it was Sunday that Harry and Meghan were going to Nigeria. Of course, it was right before Catherine and William's 13th wedding anniversary. And, and that is no coincidence. Harry and Meghan do this constantly. Anytime there's a birthday, anniversary, anytime the royals are going to do a major event, somehow, some way, it seems like a new piece of Harry and Meghan information somehow enters a new cycle. And I'm sorry, but that happens way too much to not be a coincidence. I mean, obviously, some people did talk about how Sophie, the Countess of Wessex, oh, no. No, Sophie, the Duchess of Edinburgh. She went to Ukraine, which is absolutely wonderful. She did a trip. She is the first British royal to go there during the war. And she went and I think spent most of her time in Kiev. And she is on her way home already. But obviously, she did that as well on Catherine and William's anniversary. But the situation was very carefully timed because obviously, Catherine and William released a picture from their wedding in 2011 that we haven't seen before. So we got to enjoy that for a while. And then later in the day, the news of Sophie came out because obviously they wanted her to get done with her visit before they announced that she was there, which is usually sort of what happens when a royal goes to a particularly dangerous area. They like to go ahead and sort of announce everything after the whole visit is done. So again, no surprise there. So the announcements were carefully timed where nobody's thunder was really stolen because that's how the royals work together. But Harry and Meghan were never like that. Meghan seemed to constantly want to compete with the royals for attention, 
even when she was a royal. One of the most notable instances of this is when Queen Camilla was giving a very important speech about violence against women, and Meghan Markle decided to drop her Instagram pictures while touring the National Theater for the last time because she was kicked out of that patronage, basically, when she left the royal family during the same time. And it's just very rude and disrespectful. So obviously, this was no exception. But the whole thing with the Nigeria, it's it's sort of, it makes sense in some ways, yet it's also rather odd. And part of it is how it's being positioned. Because Harry and Meghan, again, have no formal royal role anymore. They're cosplay royals. They have really no official function or capacity whatsoever. So anytime they do something, they represent nothing greater than their own business interests. Because at this point, the Invictus Games is no longer really about the soldiers, at least when it comes to the public perception of it. Because Harry and Meghan have become such a facet of it, it has become the Harry and Meghan show. Really, in a lot of ways, sometimes the Megan show. I have this whole theory about why the Invictus Games allows her to continue flaunting around at the games, doing nothing but posing in a very expensive fashion designs and everything. I mean, in their couple of days in Vancouver earlier this year, she had like seven or eight coats for three days. And she has no function is this event What? So ever, but she seems to feel the need to insert herself into it in a lot of ways. And now it's sort of becoming a package. Well, you get Harry, you get Megan too. And the games have lost so much of their focus in the process. Now, I don't blame necessarily the competitors because I think they want to keep the games. But I think the games, the unfortunate reality is, is that they're not attracting an audience. And so to, you could say, not pull the wool over their eyes, but to sort of buffer themselves against the lack of interest from the broader public. They put Harry and Meghan and make them very much the focus because a decent amount of news media shows up. And because a decent amount of news media shows up, it looks like the games are much more exciting and much more crowd-pleasing perhaps than they actually are. I think, and this is just my theory, most of the crowds, if you look at them, are pretty small. And so they're not attracting a lot of crowds, but Harry and Meghan sort of camouflage that by attracting a lot of immediate attention. And then they probably group the crowds together. So it looks like it's more full than it actually is. And I think that's what's happening in the last couple of years because the games are just not what they were even in 2016. I went in the 2016 games. I actually thought they were really enjoyable and wonderful. And that was when Harry was, yes, a leader of it. But I felt like a lot of times, too, he did sort of take a step back. But now it has become entirely about promoting Harry and Meghan. And because of that, everything has now become more complicated. And the games themselves have, I think, lost a lot of people in the process. And Harry and Meghan need to take a huge step back. But they ain't going to do that. Because the Invictus Games is one of those things where they can sort of shield themselves and go, look, we're still doing great and wonderful things. Can't you tell? But we all know that's not entirely the case because the Invictus Games in many ways for Harry and Meghan is an entirely self-serving enterprise. So what was the information we got about their visit? So this is from Twitter. I just pulled this from my Twitter account. It was from the Daily Times of Nigeria. The defense headquarters has expressed its honor and delight for the acceptance of the Duke of Duchess, His Royal Highness Prince Harry and his wife, the Duchess of Sussex, Meghan, to visit Nigeria in May 2024. Obviously, there is not great. This really should have gone through a, a bit of clarification, but there's a lot of things even just wrong in this simple statement. Number one, Harry and Meghan cannot use an HRH anymore. They are barred from using that, his or her royal highness. So they, they cannot use that. And ironically too, they technically just used it for Harry and not Meghan, but either way, it's, it's wrong. It's, it's, it's totally wrong. They can't do that. And so Harry and Meghan, especially if their team was part of this, should have clarified that to Nigeria at some point here. So I don't know where this mistake came from, but I don't think Harry and Meghan really want to abide by any aspect of the Sandringham Accords anyways. And so this, again, just hugely problematic just here because it's just, again, oh gosh, the grammar, the Duke of Duchess. (laughs) Oh, that's, that's bad. And and obviously it's the defense and they're doing this for the Invictus Games, but shouldn't they really put this on here that it's for the Invictus Games, not Harry and Meghan? Because this is supposed to promote apparently the Invictus Games 
coming to Nigeria at some point. Now, I will say Nigeria is a very, very populous country. It's also a very, very unstable country in a lot of ways. And so I, I have a hard time envisioning the Invictus Games coming there and all the competitors going there. It's, it's harder for people to get to and those sorts of things. So I, I just imagine that's going to be really, really challenging. And I just don't foresee that happening. But it's disappointing in Harry and Meghan in some ways to accept this sort of visit. And the reason is, is that this is not going to be about the Invictus Games. It's going to devolve into, like I said, the Harry and Meghan show because Meghan let us know a couple of years ago. Oh, my gosh, she is part Nigerian. And so this comes from People Magazine talking about how Megan, let's see here, on her podcast, she discovered and learned after taking a genealogy test that she is 43% Nigerian. Now, I will say, we don't know that for sure because we haven't seen the results. And I will also say that the more information they get on those tests, the more sort of they differentiate. So that could actually change. My family actually, in one of my family members, had a 5.5% from Cameroon. At one point, as they got more information, that went away. So this is an invitation for the defense minister who attended the games last year in Germany has expressed willingness to host the game should Nigeria be granted the opportunity. And during their visit, the couple will meet with service members and take part in a variety of cultural activities. So this very much, in a lot of ways, sounds somewhat like a royal tour which Harry and Meghan should not be on because they are not royals anymore. So Harry and Meghan represent nothing but themselves and their own business interests. So royals, when they go on tour, they are representing the crown and by extension, the UK government because royals are all about soft power. If you listened to my crown report recently where I went over the state visit between the Netherlands and Spain, I talked about this aspect of royalty. It's very much the soft diplomacy. So they go to a country, they establish connections and relationships. And yes, royals cannot dictate policy in the vast majority of cases, but they can smooth relations. They can allow relationships to develop and grow and for countries to come together at a later point for an official engagement, an official event or a state visit, something. And when Catherine and William go on tours, they're not going there to promote themselves. That happens by happenstance, of course, but at the same time, they are there to support their interests, support the country, show off the country. That's why it was so, I think, offensive for the Jamaican prime minister to use the opportunity of Catherine and William's visit, which was sort of somewhat dictated to them by the government, to say that they didn't want the queen to be head of state anymore. It was incredibly unprofessional for him to do that because they're basically there at his behest and he uses it as an opportunity to drag them and their roles. It's like, oh, come on. That's just, it was just so unbelievably unprofessional for him to do that. But again, royals represent something greater. So they represent the head of state of a country. Royals are not celebrities. Yes, they occupy some of that sphere, but royals are head of state. Charles is the head of state of the United Kingdom. He is the figurehead of the country diplomatically. That is the role he plays. That is a role William and Catherine will play. You know, obviously by extension, Camilla plays as well. And Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip played. And all the royal family members who are working, who go abroad and represent the crown there, represent that extension of the head of state. They are essentially the face in many ways of the UK government. That's the role that royals fill. Harry and Meghan have none of that co official capacity, none of that whatsoever. But we also had, and this is so funny because I and many other people shared with Vanity Fair our frustration over how they portrayed this. And it did get a community note, which is very important, but it like appears and disappears, which is kind of annoying. So in here, we have Vanity Fair says Meghan Markle will join Prince Harry on a trip to Nigeria this May, the couple's first official international tour since leaving their royal roles. Of course, obviously, which I mentioned and many other people did too. Let's see if it's still there or not. Ugh, it dip disappears from time to time. But I wrote and responded, can't be an official tour unless they're officially royal, which they are not. This is a promotional tour for themselves to highlight Megan's roots and somewhat the Invictus Games outlets need to stop describing it this way as misrepresents what it actually is. And I got to say, it's nice to be ratioed <laughs> in, in my favor, because obviously my tweet has a, over a thousand likes, 1200 likes, and the original post only has 618. 
<laughs> which goes to show that people are commenting on this. And this is what showed up later. Readers added context. The trip is not official as they are not officials of anything, which is true. They're not officials of anything. And this is what the grace frustration is, in my opinion. Like I described, royals have this official role. They serve as an official head of state, working royals. This is a role that they fulfill. So when they travel, they go to broad. As an extension, they represent the head of state. Now, with Beatrice and Eugenie, who are both recently, I think, in Saudi Arabia for a, I think, some sort of World Economic Summit event or something to that effect, they are just simply representing themselves. Yes, they do have an attachment to the crown, but they are representing themselves. They have no oomph of the United Kingdom government, and they never really have. They've never been official working royals or anything in that nature. But the problem with Harry and Meghan is, the problem I see and just continues to be the broader issue, is that Harry and Meghan, I think, think that they still fulfill that role. They think, they believe, and they are deluded enough to push that, I think, somewhat on other people that this is an official royal tour. It's not. It's a celebrity promotional, self-promotional tour. That is what this is. Nothing more, nothing less. Because even if Harry goes there and he talks up the Invictus Games, the only thing that will happen is talks with the Invictus Games. It actually could potentially damage relationships with the UK government, depending on what Harry and Meghan do, depending on how Nigeria interacts with them. I should double check and see here. Because Nigeria is actually a Commonwealth country. So it is a part of the broader economic agreement that is a Commonwealth nations. People still think, you know, in terms of the colonialism and everything. And yes, it is a legacy from that. But people join and stay in the Commonwealth because of all the economic benefits. They get a better trade deal with the United Kingdom because they are a Commonwealth nation. Harry and Meghan could in some ways disrupt that. And that is not because of Harry and Meghan necessarily, although their behavior has a lot to do with it. I think the biggest issue that remains is that the crown is not clear where Harry and Meghan stand. And that is because we get constant changing narratives. And I think a lot of it driven by Montecito in a lot of ways that Harry wants to be a working royal again, that they both want to be working royals again, that the palace doesn't want them to be working royals again, <laughs> that Harry is trying to make inroads with his dad, but his dad doesn't want to interact with Meghan. Like there's just so many stories. And the problem is, is that Harry and Meghan thrive on the ambiguity that the monarchy left them. and. They should have, when they left, been made clear. And yes, I understand Queen Elizabeth was trying to give them time to work out what they wanted to do, give them a route back. I admire her for that because she was trying to think that Harry and Meghan might change their minds, which is totally understandable. But there's a problem now that's remaining is that Harry and Meghan are still trying to act like they are working royals. And countries, and I think some officials treat them like that because the monarchy hasn't told the world in so many words, Harry and Meghan are fully and completely out. They are utterly and completely on their own. They don't have titles anymore. Their children don't have titles anymore. Treat them as if you would the average celebrity. They're essentially a much less talented version of Taylor Swift. Yes, they have a global profile, but they are not officials. Doesn't matter what their organization does. Doesn't matter how much of an impact the Invictus Games has. Everything they do is to serve their own business interests. That's all they do. And the monarchy needs to treat them like that. And they keep treating them with kid gloves. And it's becoming very, very obnoxious because Harry and Meghan, again, they thrive in this confusion. They thrive. They keep trying to push the limits of what they can get away with. And the monarchy can do something very simple. And I've advocated for this numerous times. And I think I really want monarchy to go along with this at some point, but they really need to amend the letters of patent. They need to get into gear. Obviously, the letters of patent were, I think the last ones were in, what, the 1918s or something like that, the 1910s sometimes, maybe 1920s. So it's been a long time since they've been amended. There was a brief amendment so that all of Catherine and William's children could be princes and princesses upon birth, and that was because they were going to be the children of the future king, and they didn't really have a situation where the monarch was so elderly at that point that they could have great grandchildren, great, great grandchildren, and all those sorts of things. I, it was just great grandchildren. But anyways, they amended it so that all the children could have those titles. They also amended it so that Charlotte would not lose her place to Louis when he was born. So, th 
so that it doesn't matter what gender the child is, whatever place they're born in, that is their place in the line of succession. So you don't have another Princess Anne situation. But I think they need to take it a step further because the Harry and Meghan problem is not going to go away. I think Charles, I understand he wants a route back, but Meghan does not have enough respect for the monarchy to even try to abide by some of the rules. I mean, she's blatantly, flagrantly ignoring the Sandringham Agreement by completely and utterly monetizing offer titles. Because what is American Riviera Orchard? Why? It's by Meghan, the Duchess of Sussex. That's not going to go away unless you force it to go away. Again, the easiest way to do that is to amend the letters of patent and say simply, if you decide to leave as a working royal, the title that was given to you under the understanding that you would be a working royal, because some people are like, oh, Queen Elizabeth gave this to them as a gift. Well, that may be somewhat true, but it was under the understanding that he would be a working royal and that she would be a working royal. Well, as it turns out, Meghan didn't want to be a working royal unless she could be queen, essentially, of it. So she wanted to leave and Harry, of course, followed her right out. But they need to change it so that if you leave, the title stays in the palace. It doesn't go anywhere. You decide to leave. Those are the consequences of that. You don't get to you don't get to use and abuse the title elsewhere. You get to be just like princesses Beatrice and Eugenie. You still get to be a prince of something. You can kind of be like Prince and Princess Michael of Kent. That's what you can be. So Meghan can be Princess Harry, but she can't be anything else because this, again, really, really needs to end. And also, I love the Swedish approach that says you must be educated and raised essentially in Sweden to still retain your place in the line of succession. I think that should be 100% the UK approach. I don't understand why you're keeping children in the line of succession who have no connection to the UK. They have zero connection, Archie and Lily, to the UK. Zero. They will not know the history. They will not know the culture, the heritage. They will know nothing. And that is their parents. That is entirely on their parents. Because the other situation about Harry and Meghan, and I made a big point about this when Harry and Meghan went to Jamaica, is that Nigeria is a pretty unstable place in a lot of ways. And you have Boko Haram up in the north. I don't know. I haven't heard much about that in the media anymore. But it is generally, I would say, a pretty violent and unstable place. And so they can go to Nigeria. They can go to Jamaica. They can go to Costa Rica. But oh, no, no, no. The UK is too dangerous. That line of BS needs to end because it is utter and complete BS a thousand percent. We all know that it becomes just so blatantly obvious how just much of a bullcrap that thing is. And so Harry and Meghan need to stop making such a fuss about their safety in the UK. It would be perfectly fine if they give the acceptable 28 days notice as they've been asked to. The security forces will do a review. If they don't find any threat, you guys are on your own. And the rest of the royal family seems to get on with that just fine. But it's Harry and Meghan that seem to, oh, we are just so important and special that everybody is looking at. No, no, <laughs> they don't like you. I mean, Meghan's not going to the Invictus Game ceremony on May 8th. And I don't think that's because of security. That's because she doesn't want to be booed. Megan's a coward, essentially. She does not want to be booed. That's why she's not going. And that's why she won't ever let Harry go back to the UK because she doesn't really want him to have any connection with his family, his friends, his country, anything, because it is all about serving Megan. And that's what this Nigeria trip will descend into. It'll be an entirely a Meghan Markle sideshow. And that is the problem. They're there to promote the Invictus games. But of course, at the end of the day, the ultimate victims of all this are still the Invictus games. And again, I think, unfortunately, they're allowing this to continue to protect themselves from a games that just is not attracting an audience. And that's totally fine, but the danger is right now, the Invictus Games, I think they want to continue to grow, but I'm sorry, but there's just nowhere to grow in terms of how you're generating revenue. Basically, all the costs for the games fall on the city, fall on corporate sponsors. Hardly any of it falls on the Invictus Games Foundation itself, volunteers, because the games don't generate any money. They want to broadcast these games. It's just... It's not probably going to happen. There's just not enough of an audience to generate that level of interest. And so Harry and Meghan need to accept that. But again, we will get the Nigerian sideshow here. And I just think it's so unfortunate. And again, Charles, you need to act. You need to stop sitting on the fence and just amend the letters of patent. Unfortunately, your son has made a decision and he's going to have to live with the consequences. And I know that's hard for everyone involved, but. That 
his life. So guys, let me know what you think of this video. Let me know what you think of Harry and Meghan in Nigeria. It is going to be somewhat entertaining, I guess. So guys, thanks so much for watching and I shall see you soon. Bye.